Hi everyone, welcome to our 10th special edition episode of a milestone edition of Footy Focus podcast. First milestone? Yes, first of a million. I think uh, it's a milestone also because we um, overtake our rivals on the spot. On the spot, who's that? Didn't they do nine? Did they do nine, did, uh, they, do nine, yeah. did they? I thought they did four. <laughs> okay, they haven't released five, I think. Oh yeah, they did um, maybe four good ones. Four <laughs> off the record. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah, they do a lot of like... Off the record ones. Private chats, yeah. yeah. Mm. Um, but yeah, we should give a quick shout out to them, maybe. <laughs> yeah, hopefully they can uh, get back on the pod. I think one of them's gone to Europe, so. Yeah, so there might be a little bit of a long, a bit of a more delay, unless they do like a Skype one. But um, no, it's a couple of our friends did, are doing a podcast as well. Giz and Barney Probably on the spot. Probably inspired us to yeah. start out. They talk about um, finance and health and stuff. So check that out. Chat and... <laughs> Dennis, Dennis. <laughs> our two listeners. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we might move on to our um, NBA chat. Yeah, so I talked about it for five seconds last week. So since then, free agency has started. So the big names, so Kevin Durant and Kyrie went to Brooklyn Nets. So they spurned New York Knicks. Kawhi Leonard convinced one of my boys, Paul George, to break a contract. So he joined him as well. So the compensation for Paul George... Five first sounds round. Like a, sounds like a singer. Yeah, no, two first Paul names. Paul George. No, I'm shattered now. My team, my team's gone now. Just rebuilding. Going to trade the next superstar as well. What the f- skin colour is Paul? They're all, they're all, they're all. Uh, well, I don't want to say. I that. think you can say African American. African American. <laughs> I was going to say the other word. No, but we got five first round picks and China two players. Has written down that other word to me, and that's pretty racist. <laughs> Starting with B. <laughs> no, but um, the Aussie guy, Ben Simmons, so he's going to get a max contract, five years, $170 million. Now, so it, Is that like the most ever an Aussie has earned? That's the reckon? most by far, yeah. I think Bogut, the most he got was under 100. And he never sports, got 100, like yeah. Ricky Ponting wouldn't have earned that much, yeah. No, that's the most, no, I think, for an Aussie ever. So that's pretty big news. The first day alone, it was $3.1 billion spent. 12 players received over $100 million guaranteed. And then the other one, Kevin Durant, he got four years, $164 million contract, but he's already been ruled out of next season with the Achilles. So it's pretty, uh, yeah, pretty huge money for a guy that's... 31, might be 30. So he might, will I think he still be in his prime? He'll be in his prime, but he's got one year off, but not many players have come back from an Achilles to 100%. crazy, yeah. But yeah, I think it'll be between Brooklyn and the LA teams for the championship, so... Next year, okay. Yeah, next season, so... The World Cup's actually started the semi-finals. Cricket, cricket yeah. World Cup, what was, yeah. what was the score update? That doesn't matter, it's a podcast, so we'll, <laughs> they'll know the um, results. <laughs> uh, so, I reckon um, India... So it's England, India, oh, there's New no Zealand today. About this, but yeah. It'll be done by the time yeah. it's out. So, you reckon Australia, India? Yeah, I think Australia, India. I think Coley's due for 100. Yeah, okay. What do you think? Uh, yeah, I reckon it'll be Australia, India, and then it's a toss of a coin after that. Just because of the Aussie injuries, I think they're starting to mount. Um, yeah, they're getting injured in the net. Yeah, um, Marsh broke his wrist, and he would have replaced Kawaja, but... Yeah. Um, Kawaja did a hammy. Yeah. So who's filling in, do you know? So it's Wade and Hamskin, two uh, big boys. Both of them or one of them? I think, like, both of them came into the squad. I think Wade's the only one that will get a game. Okay, yeah. Um, and what's the other semi final? Australia, England. So, preview of the yeah, Ashes on one. Thursday. Yeah. You think Australia will win? Um, yeah, Australia, they are, they're a big game team, aren't they? Country. They just yeah, they stand up it. in the big games. Yeah, I don't think they've. I think they've That's had enough better. for a boomerang. <laughs> We're getting some promotional videos done by a professional here. <laughs> yeah, I'm married to her. <laughs> No, um, I think the Ashes preview will be pretty good. I think, yeah, Australia, they've, they've had better teams, but I think they'll find a way to win. I think Australia wins the Cup. Yeah. yeah. Uh, oh, I don't want to say it. I don't, like, oh. I don't want to see them win, like, two in a row. Uh, so you're going for England? Anyone, but I might go for New Zealand, but I, I doubt... I reckon India has a better chance of beating Australia in the final. Yeah. So I'd want New Zealand to win, but um, I think, yeah... India might. Do you want to just quickly talk about uh, Shakib Al Hassan? Yeah, so I think he's the best pan for pan player. He's playing for Bangladesh, who went, didn't get close to the semis, but his lowest score on the tournament was 41, two hundreds, which are match winning hundreds, and he's taken 11 wickets now. That's crazy. It's, is he all around there? He's an all rounder. Is he's he played, open? Or? He's played big bash here. I think okay. he bats four, second drop to number four. Okay. But yeah, he's, is he uh, captain or not? No, he's not captain. He should be, though. 
Okay. Yeah. No, it's good. Good for him. So we'll see. And how I think Sri Lanka has the positive to come out of it would be Fernando. Yeah. Fernando. Three. Yeah. 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 Third youngest player to hit 100 in the World Cup. So yeah. it's, it's disappointing that was the only positive. There w- weren't too many. Like it would have been nice to see maybe a younger bowler come through, but uh, not to be. So. In time, I think. Yeah. So, okay, let's maybe move on. So this week's topic is going to be about Wayne Schwoss. So Wayne Schwoss used to play for the Kangaroos in Sydney. He was a Premiership player for the Roos in '96. He was one of your better players, wasn't he? Yeah, he was. He must. I can't remember. I don't remember a lot about. He won a big effort North. Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. but um, and then he moved to a Sydney the year after or after the grand final. Yeah, and, after um, he won a flag. Yeah. Do you know who we? Who involved was involved in the trade to get Schoss to Sydney? Yeah, Shannon Grant. Yeah, yeah. And Grant won a Norm Smith in '99. So worked uh, out for both clubs. Yeah. So do you want to talk a bit about him? Because I think yeah. you know a little bit more. Yeah. So there was a Fox Sports article last week. So there's an image of him on the article receiving his 1996 Premiership medallion, kissing the um, the medal. You'd probably think that's the greatest moment of his career, but he described that picture as this is what suicide looks like. So. Um, as as we said, so he's mm. had an unbelievable career, been a B and F at two clubs. You'd think that he'd be one of the last people that would go through that type of thing. So he got diagnosed with dep- depression in 1993. For the next 12 years, only his wife and three medicos knew the truth. So he's since gone public over 10 years ago. Now he's a mental health advocate. Um, yeah. And you've seen it this season with the players that have. There's gone a lot away. of them like coming out and like uh, taking time off. Yeah, for mental health reasons. Uh, it just makes you think, like, Wayne Schwartz, or even footballers, they can be successful on the field, yeah. or even if they don't win a premiership, they're still getting paid a lot of money for yeah. people their age. But, yeah, disc- um, mental health doesn't discriminate, does it? It can, like, you can be poor, rich, yeah. well-off, or not well-off, it just... Well, two of those players, Jack Steven and Dane Beams, they've, they're multiple BNF winners. I think Jack Steven's yeah. on the last four BNFs. Exactly, they have, yeah. they'll be wealthy, like, financially stable yeah. off the field, but, yeah, they can, yeah, go through... Depression. Um, yeah. Obviously, we talked about Boyd probably a month ago. Yeah. Um, Broadbent and Ling John are two other players that yeah, have with taken Ling time John, away. Yeah, Ling John and also Aaron Hall are taking time That's away. Right, yeah. So, I guess you can analyse why this is happening, like why are they getting depressed or whatever. Yeah. So, uh, with those two, the latter two, do you reckon injuries might have might be a reason? Because they seem to be injured a lot of the time. Well, Broadbent was out for two years. John, I think, had that. He broke gold and missed out on a flag as well, so that's probably not the best. Aaron Hall's come from Gold Coast as well. Yeah, so I think injuries, injuries do have a part to play, yeah. As in, like, um, that's why they get depressed and stuff, yeah? It's probably yeah. like a, what's the word? Catalyst. I think it's a catalyst for yeah, okay. going through that. Because the other thing is the impact that drugs have. Like, um, because drugs and mental health, that's also to Hand in hand, maybe? Yeah, exactly, yeah. I, um, I listened to the Rowan Col- Colony... <laughs> Ron Connolly. Ron Connolly, yeah. yeah. And um, Mark Fine podcast. Yeah. And, yeah, they were talking about this like, a couple of yeah. weeks ago and they were saying, yeah, they're both going hand in hand. So he's not saying that the players with depression like Dan Beams are doing drugs or anything, but, yeah, yeah they reckon that could be... Yeah, an issue. Or yeah, related, I guess. Related yeah. to maybe other players. Yeah, well, it's really topical this week because your boy, Majak, returned in the VFL. Mm-hmm. So he... Broke his hip, but he fell. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Had a incident. They call it. The a, yeah. The word. The way they word it. Yeah. They say he fell off um, the bridge and. Lucky to lucky to be alive. Yeah. Water. Yeah. He broke his pelvis and um, a lot of hip injuries. So they didn't expect him to like walk again, let alone play footy. This yeah. only like six seven months after yeah. when it happened. So. No, he returned to the VFL. How did he go on the weekend? He yeah, he got through it. It was a success. So it was only a small step because he played two eight-minute bursts off okay. the bench, and then um, I think it was going well. So they let him play a couple of extra minutes. Yeah. So I think he played twenty minutes overall, which is like yeah. not even a quarter. But I think it's just baby steps you at reckon, this stage. Yeah. You reckon he'll get back in the first? Uh, I reckon we don't know what's going to happen with him this week. He might. Um, they haven't announced it yet, so I expect him to play again. Yeah. Maybe play a little bit more game time. Uh, if, all, if all goes well, I'd hope to see him back. Maybe towards around nineteen twenty. Yeah. Get get him like a month of footy before uh, we get a push bit of confidence. the finals. Yeah. If we are out of finals contention, then 
I don't know if I'd risk it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but if we're in it, then yeah, it'll be a good boost for the team and for, for the club. Well, it's what you were talking about before. He had his best season, probably his only good season last season. Yeah. Probably did he make the forty man Australian squad? All Australian he didn't squad? make it, but he had a Unlucky, really good year. Yeah. So he broke out last year, yeah. uh, and that's when he was prior to last year. He wasn't playing good footy like. Yeah. I wasn't a fan. I wanted him to be and, and then he broke out. And yeah, then it's when he had these mental yeah. health issues. So again, you don't know like what what's happening in a player, yeah. right? It's a yeah. It's very hard to r- read. I guess we can't read. Yeah. Yeah. So move on to the something we are grateful for segment. So the sponsor we've got a sponsor. It's uh, Melbourne Zoo. So, okay. have you seen some elephants at Melbourne Zoo? <laughs> okay. Namely, Dumbo, Dumbo the elephant. Oh yeah. Do so we? Are we friends with Dumbo? Are we, we friends <laughs> with uh, we friends with the Dumbo the elephant. Got yeah. bigger ears than Dumbo, so that's, uh, that's enough of a shout out. Yeah. yeah. I don't think we've already mentioned the name, so. Yeah, I've done it twice. He's now. got a good memory. That's why. Um, <laughs> we. That's what's a, that's a joke, right? Yeah, that, that's a joke. Yeah. <laughs> and the ears too. <laughs> so yeah, my one is yeah, it's an open race for top four and finals. Probably the most open race we've seen since, since last I year. Can, probably since <laughs> I can remember. Probably uh, probably more open than last year. I think there's more teams that can win it. Even teams like Port and. Do you know why that is? I think it's because um, a lot of the teams are pretty terrible at the moment. Yeah, they're. What's what's even GWS? They've lost six matches. They're probably one yeah, of the top like, four fancies. There aren't many good teams, and. Uh, it, well, it was Geelong maybe three weeks ago, but even that, they've, they've got come a back down to the pack, now. Yeah. So, apart from maybe West Coast, there aren't too many good teams. Richmond's coming home um, pretty well as well. If a team like North makes the finals, yeah. why couldn't they make yeah. a prelim or a grand final? Yeah, that's final? what I was saying like a month ago. So, I don't think North are in that category, but teams like Port and Brisbane, I, I think we said Frio four weeks ago, but yeah, it's, but after away, that yeah. they've yeah they got a couple cup a couple of injuries and yeah. they won two games after the siren so yeah. taking the, all that into account they're definitely like in that bottom six yeah uh, but yeah I think uh, we'll talk about maybe the Lions should I well what do you want to, uh, let's talk about Pies and um, GWS stumbling yeah. a bit yeah so Pies after making the grand final last year they've lost the last three the, um, lost the last three I think. So I think they've really come back to the pack. GWS have lost the last two. And there's a great stat. Was it Swamp? I think it's Swamp's thing. Have you seen that Twitter page? No. He's like the AFL statistician. So the team oh, is yeah, sitting, yeah, he's really good, yeah. The team sitting second on the ladder have only won four matches this season. The bottom team has won six. So that's like Carlton, Gold Coast, um, what team Melbourne. Sitting, what's that again? Team the sitting? bottom team yeah. has won six matches this season. Bottom team, the bottom Gold team, Coast. Yeah, 18th place team. Have won how many games? Six six matches. Yeah. And no, the, they haven't. The, yeah. No, the team sitting eighteenth. So when the when you go into the round, the yeah. team on the bottom of the ladder, yeah. they've won six matches. So Gold Coast started off like top four. Yeah. Okay. So we'll go through this stat. So <laughs> do you have it? <laughs> yeah, it's it's on it's on the Twitter. Uh, okay. It's on the Twitter. Right. Swamp Swamp's thing or Swampy's thing or something. Yeah, like no, that. it's Swampy Swamp. I think it's Swamp. Swamp, yeah. Yeah, he's he brings out he's got a lot of stats, yeah. So move on to lines. You want to talk about? Yeah, the lines? I just want to talk about something I'm grateful for, and um, it's just a spread of goal kickers. Yeah. So it's the modern game. It's good to have a spread of goal kickers to make your team unpredictable, yeah. and um, so the defenders just don't lock down on some key players. So the Lions had 11 different goal kickers on the weekend. I think Lincoln McCarthy, McCarthy kicked three, and Cameron kicked two or three as well. But the rest were all multiple. So. Um, Whereas on the flip side, the Kangaroos had two bags of five and so Brown kicked yeah. three. So it's, it's good to see bags, especially when they kick by youngsters. But yeah, yeah I think um, spreading that definitely makes the team better and a bit more dynamic. So well, That's um, why Clarko won. He was not unhappy to get rid of or for Lance Franklin, Franklin to go yeah, because it, it spread, the, spread the load. Yeah. yeah, so yeah, that might lead us into a, a bit of a game, game review. Where Watch a bit of that one. Yeah, I watched a bit. So the Lions, um, from the start, pretty much, they sort of dominated. Oh, not dominated, but they had the upper hand and put mm-hmm. it on the scoreboard early as well. So it um, got the cr- uh, crowd out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Much of a crowd. Is there much of a crowd <laughs> yeah. there? Is there much of a home field event? That was a joke, <laughs> bit of wasn't a, it? Yeah, tongue in cheek there. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so after that, they, they pretty much broke even after that. And then, yeah, got a few more goals towards the end. But... They look, they look really good, really good, don't they? Like 
from back line to forward line. Yeah, there are yeah, no sound? weaknesses at the moment. I'm still not convinced that the, the tours, the key, f- so Hipwood, Hip McInerney, and Mac- McStay can be reliable down the line-ups. Yeah, that's finals. probably the only weakness, huh? Like, if they get a good defender, like... I think they're just too young. That's yeah. that's a thing. But look, I could be proven wrong, and you could just end up playing Cameron out of the goal square like they've done the last yeah. month. I don't know if Oscar McInerney play, but he's pretty good. If he, like, yeah. can do Great what Pox did, Mark, yeah. yeah, if he can do that, then um, just bring the ball to the ground, and you've got, like, Camerons and yeah. Rainers there to, like... Kicks on goals, but um, well, yeah, the midfield standing up, and um, it was an upset win, and it was against a good quality opposition. So. Yeah, well, Zorko I think is one of the last four BNFs, but your stat pressure acts. I think he's leading the comp in that. So right, yeah, he's a good tackler as well. Yeah, yeah. speedy player. Yeah, so um, I think yeah, they'll be right up there when it. I don't know if they made the top four though. Do you reckon they'll make the top four? I think they might slide in there. If GWS keep losing. It's probably between GWS and Lions. Yeah, it's, it's to probably make their fourth. spot, yeah. Mm. Well, to lose. But then there's Richmond as well. They're coming. Yeah, coming strong oh, yeah. as well. So it'll be interesting. I don't think um, we can probably lock in Rich, um, West Coast and Cats. Cats, yeah, yeah I think mm-hmm. they're top two. So we've got a good game preview this week the grand final rematch. Oh, yeah, it is. Didn't click. Uh, is this the second time? I think it's second the second time, time they play. Yeah. First time, MCG. Yeah, in Optus Stadium in WA. So um, this is a really important game for Collingwood, especially if yeah, they want to... Um, get back on track. Yeah, they sort of lost the plot last month or so. And then they have... A, yeah, they're going to risk losing... Uh, missing out on the top four. And from that, yeah. it really becomes hard to go... To win a premiership. And this... Th- Collingwood were the team that were touted as premiership favourites, I reckon. Yeah. Last year, and they have the best midfield in ever. history. Yeah. yeah. But um, yeah, they come up against the informed West Coast team, so yeah, they need to um, and West Coast, um, they're not going to lose many games at home. I think yeah, it's a bit of a fortress over there. Yeah, and um, what was I do you say? think the Jaden Stevens' absence has really? Set them back. I think that's a bit overrated, surely. One flag. Yeah, I reckon, yeah. Experience. Especially like a 20-year-old. Uh, I reckon... Play, yeah. yeah, just a key forward setup isn't working, yeah? Like Cox, Cox is Cox. really out of form. And that's all they have. Ben Reed, I guess, he was playing okay when he was in the team. Yeah. But other than that, they've got Tagoe, who plays tall, I suppose. Yeah, Tagoe and Elliot, they're probably the keys. Elliot's really. been like... Um, I think Elliot's in their bottom six players, and sometimes he just hasn't hit his... Best, out. yeah. He's but, been out for two years, pretty yeah, much. Exactly, yeah, exactly, yeah. So I don't know if you can rely on Elliot still. It's because all those injuries just, just takes its toll. And maybe he's lost confidence in his body because yeah. he, has, he hasn't got that spring. Yeah, he's not really seen. dangerous up forward. Yeah, so um, they're going to have to uh, sort out their forward. Yeah. Yeah. So the draft, the... They, oh, sorry, back to the... Yeah, go. Pies, they do travel interstate well, yeah. So yeah, so they're probably they more do. of a chance than at the MCJ. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, uh, for some reason they just galvanizes them when they go into state. So, uh, I think I'll still tip West Coast. Yeah, maybe by like five goals. Yeah. How about you? Yeah, I think I think West Coast, but probably by maybe a goal. I mm-hmm. think the Pies will get back into form, even though they won't pick up the points. Looking forward to the rack battle as well with Grundy and Nick Nat going oh, at it. Nick Nat's on good. fire at the moment. So the under eighteen AFL championships were last week. Did you watch the grand final? No, I didn't. Um, who won? So it was Western, Western Australia. Australia. They won their first championship for what? Ever? Might have been no, maybe for over sure 10 years are. or something. I don't know. Pretty sure they, they, they won would have for won a while. Them, yeah. But yeah, the last three minutes are on the A Force Twitter page. If you, you can watch that, Surprise amazing last three minutes. Yeah. WA, they don't have too many top end picks this year. So it's a really low score game, too. It must have been a too. very um, even team contribution for them to win. Yeah. So a few of the names, you got a few that you want to talk about as well. So South Australia's Luke Jackson. So shifter Kevin Sheen is the draft guru. He's compared him to Brody Grundy. Um, and then there's some academy what, yeah. slash next-gen prospects too. So Jackson's a Ruckman, quickly? Yeah, like yeah, Jackson, so, yeah. So he might slip again. Like Ruckman seemed to be slipping. Grundy went 18th. I Grundy think, yeah. and also Tim English slipped. Yeah. And Sam Hayes for yeah, you guys slipped as well. He was touted pretty highly. Uh, but yeah, academy players this year include Tom Green for the GWS Giants, Liam Henry for Frio, yeah. and Jackson Meads, the father and son for yeah. Port. So all of them are in Cal Toomey's uh, Phantom Form Guide, which he does sort of every, every month leading up to the yeah. um, November draft. They're first so, round talents and they're going to get picked up, not free of charge, but... 
at a yeah, big discount at least. Exactly, they'll get like a I forget what ten percent discount or something. Yeah, we might talk about this bidding system later, but yeah, Henry's a indigenous small forward. He's electric at ground level and got that typical yeah. speed and Looked skill. Looked like Cameron for me when I saw him. Yeah, he was good. Was yeah. he classy? One yeah, touch just every t- yeah one yeah. touch quicker than everyone on the yeah. field. So okay, no, fair enough. Freeman will get a next gen player. They don't haven't had any fire. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, and you guys, yeah, with me again. So he was awarded with uh, All Australian, I think. Yeah, he got an yeah. All Australian team. Yeah, so he's another sort of consistent half forward midfielder. Kicked a couple of goals, 22 touches against Big Country, 21 against the Allies in a goal. So, yeah, I, we spoke about, a bit about him last week. So he's really clean, doesn't waste many possessions. He's nothing like his dad. His dad was like. The most dour defender. Yeah, apparently he's dad his one your best, uh, your best, yeah, best, best and fairest. First best and fairest, yeah. Yeah, so we might do a little bit more of a wrap next week. But, yeah, yeah those two, uh, yeah, ones to watch. Do you reckon Sumit, who's the coach, do you reckon he should be... He's always, he was like... Head coach? He was... Position, maybe? Yeah, one of those names that kept coming up maybe 10 years ago. He's for come out of it now. Yeah. So maybe he just doesn't want to coach, because otherwise he probably would have been I think he missed out on now. a few jobs, so... Mm. So move on to the hard hitting questions. So you wanted to rename this segment, yeah? Yeah. You have you thought of any nah. names? <laughs> There's a few segments we don't want to copy any other podcast. So yeah. We'll, uh, oh yeah. By, by the way, we do that. The things you are grateful for about footy. That's yeah. just an inside joke with the other podcast because they do a you, what you are grateful for segment. So <laughs> for those who don't know, that's it's what that is about. It's so not if it doesn't so. make any, if it doesn't make much sense. <laughs> Yeah, that's why we do it. <laughs> it's not copyright, what? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> and we got a... So this one's sponsored by Vibush. Vibush. Vibush, so it's, uh, it's like a little curry. So it's uh, similar to one of our mates. He actually listens to it too, by the way. Oh, right. Petition, what, so... All of it or just the first uh, 10 minutes? Um, he says he <laughs> listens to it. I don't know. Okay, we can talk shit about him because he, I don't think he just gets this well. Oh, so. This will be the test, right? He's got a bit of a big head sometimes. Oh, huge head. <laughs> all right. Any questions for me? Or? So yeah, I'll go to you. So Longmire. So he slipped in his interview last week on 360. You reckon that's the first sign of his move to your boys north? Yeah, hundred percent guaranteed. I reckon it's done. nah. I'm just joking. Oh. No, nah, I don't know. Um, listening to the media, they reckon he'll stay at uh, Sydney because his family's there. He's yep. got young kids. They go to school there, and sounds like just reading between the lines, he's just trying to get some. Extra money. Extra, yeah, exactly. Just sort of working on a deal. Maybe add a couple more years to his contract, which comes yeah. to the end next year. So um, I don't mind if he... I don't really want him, to be honest. I reckon he's a bit of a... His game plan's not that interesting. And yeah. he's won a premiership, but I don't know. Maybe that's... like well, still that was Very early on, yeah. yeah. And he had those, the cattle. So he hasn't... I don't know. hasn't sort of developed... So you'd rather, you'd rather the well. interim coach... Reese Yeah, but it, again, the sample size is only like a month, so yeah. let's give him, give Reese Shaw the end of the year, and then, uh, yeah. If Shaw gets us to like 8th, ninth, 10th on the ladder, yeah. then I reckon, yeah, just give it to him. I think he'll get, I think he'll hire him. Yeah, I like him. Um, he's, he handles himself really well, and the players seem to love players him. Players love so. him, yeah. And on, did you, on Footy Classified last night, you know what Caroline Wilson said? She she's her yeah. uh, she accidentally said North Melbourne instead of Sydney as well. She was like, I see. "Oh yeah, I believe John Longmire will be at the Can- <laughs> North Melbourne Football Club next year." And there and Hachi and Sarah to correct her. And then, Pickers did the same thing with Buddy before yeah. he went to the Swans, so it's and, been done yeah. before. And right after she slipped up, she was like, "Oh, John Longmire, that was unprofessional of him to slip up." And she just <laughs> she did up. the same thing. Yeah, exactly. Poor Bomb Cara. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna ask you a question. So Port Adelaide. They smashed the Crows in the showdown this week. So it was, it was pretty even until uh, half time, and then yeah, they blew this away. blew them away. So are you disappointed they couldn't be the dogs last week? Uh, Is it a bit of downhill skiing? Well, not really, because Adelaide are a good team. Downhill skiing? Is that like. Like when they hit the front, they sort of. Um, oh, yeah. With <laughs> like our captain? Yeah, but not jet skiing, but. <laughs> the. Footy field skiing. <laughs> yeah, I think it was a great win. Probably the first showdown blowout for a while, but I'm not. I'm reserving any positivity until we beat the Lions this week. Because it be doesn't count game. otherwise. Yeah, Home I'm not getting game, too excited. Yeah. yeah. So, and on wines, 
Um, he he really repaid the faith on the weekend. Was probably, he that bad? Was he against? Um, yeah, he, twelve touches. So in wet conditions, that's probably his mm. type of footy. So lucky to hold his spot, but he repaid the faith and probably was one of the best on ground. Yeah, but Zebul had six last time we played Essendon, so we come up against them this week. So yeah. hopefully he can do a bit better. He'll bounce back. But now Wines was good. He had thirty-six or something on the weekend. Yeah. Yeah. So, Alir and Blitzars, who are the new, I guess, new age ruckmen, you reckon they'll get monstered in a final by a Grundy or a Nanui? Or a Goldstein, or yeah. A Goldstein, yeah. <laughs> Ooh, nah, yeah, you, or Lysette, probably more likely, yeah. yeah. I think, yeah, they will. I don't think, um, yeah, that roving type of ruckman will stand up. It's probably uh, good in bursts. Yeah, because uh, I don't know how good those two are with contested marking, because I think, yeah, the player, ruckman that can push back or push forward and yeah. take a contested grabber. Very valuable in that in tight contested games. They're playing as extra games. Uh, midfielders pretty much. They're like roving to themselves or roving to the other Ruckman. Yeah, That's what right, I saw on the yeah. weekend anyway. Because I've heard sometimes they don't even go up. They just like... Yeah, rove over. to the other tap. Yeah, so I don't know how sustainable that is. Uh, I'll give you a question. Do you reckon the Suns deserve a first round priority pick this year after their chairman... Yeah, he's planning to push for one. Yeah, I think no team in history deserve more. I think not only that, I think they need to get some senior players, not like a Hodge. I think Hodge is pretty cemented in Brisbane, but someone like that. They need a few players like that because I don't think Murdoch, Miles and Hall and Smith are going to cut it as players are going to shepherd the young players through. Yeah, that's good. A good point, yeah. Like what GWS did in their starting formative yeah, years. Ward, got... Davis... And also, like, Luke Power, Chad yeah. Corns. I think a McDonald too from Melbourne, too. Yeah, they, they yeah. had some really so good... Those, Brogan, yeah. Yeah, so good players that have something to offer, but um, but who have been A-graders maybe in their prime. Yeah. Yeah, unlike the, yeah, Miles and Holden Smith you talked about, who well, are never A-graders. Well, the 3-1 start was probably a bit of a false falsity because they've lost the last 11 matches. And percentage is 67, so... Yeah, like, we both agree, like... Do he can still coach? Yeah. Oh, so he should, he yeah. He's he's a great coach. I yeah. Think, so um, with the right cattle. Yeah, I reckon it's still a hard one because um, uh, giving them an extra pick, I think they just they're gonna push for it because they can get Raul and Anderson and together because then they're pretty much good friends or best. Yeah. Media just keeps saying best friends. We don't know if they're actually best friends yeah. or not, but they play footy together and they go to the same school and yeah. So if you get them together, they might like um, have that. Con- connection to stay up there and not yeah. be drawn to go back home or they could go for the country boys who are more yeah. less likely to go home because if they live in Mildura or whatever they're gonna have to move away from home anyway so that's the brisbane recruiting strategy after yo 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 yeah Polak yo, yo, and all those guys left carnieses yeah all those guns yeah, Chris yeah. As well, yeah. <laughs> um yeah that's really worked for them all, all of them are resigning yeah, exactly so. and don't you reckon like, sometimes the country boys have a bit more sort of character and yeah, a lot of steel them, to them? Yeah. They've gone to boarding schools. Yeah. They've probably like, already been away from I home. think Jacobs was from Metro. So. Was he? <laughs> yeah, I'm yeah. pretty sure it was Metro boy. So um, maybe the country boys are the way to go. More resilient, I think. Exactly. Yeah. So ask them maybe like second round picks rather yeah. than first round picks. And I'll ask. Yeah, I want to ask you this. Should oh. AFL club officials be allowed to take annual leave during the AFL season? Because I think our kangaroos chairman took De- leave. and Delina? Yeah, Delina, yeah. And also, um, hey, no, what's his name? Gil. Gil McLaughlin, he's also taken a bit of leave. Gil McLaughlin, he took, I think, three days off for, a, I think, a 50th birthday. I think the issue with that was they, they didn't tell anyone. Mick Warner's the one that exposed it after the fact. If you just said, I'm going away for three days just okay. to a friend's birthday, then that's fine. Delina, that one I'm a bit more sceptical yeah, over. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because three weeks, what's it, three weeks? I don't know, but I don't think officials should be taking yeah. leave during Ooh. the... In season. Well, maybe if Scott was still there. I mean, this is a really critical time. You're trying oh, to evaluate Shaw. Exactly, you're trying to find yeah, a coach. exactly. We've sacked a coach. So I think it's a pretty sensitive time for the leader of the club to go. So yeah. I prefer he would have stayed. And I reckon they should, even regardless of if you sack your coach or not, just yeah. can't, why can't they just go and leave during the off season? Because yeah. what's well, like normal like, people like you wouldn't go when you're doing a project. So I wouldn't go in not, tax season. You know? Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah, the like, there's season. always blackout yeah. periods. Yeah. So I reckon, I know the players, they, they have like a six-week window after the grand final yeah, or whatever. After they're not required to finishes, do anything. Yeah. Yeah. So why couldn't, couldn't the officials take time off then? So I reckon, yeah, they're getting paid a lot of money. I yeah. think so. Do they get paid a lot of money? Oh, yeah. More than the average. Do they? Is it Delina? The because I heard Brayshaw no. talk about they get they don't get paid or something. That's what Eddie doesn't get paid. 
You know how that's, Donald Trump doesn't get paid for running the world? He gets paid a little <laughs> bit. He gets paid like, I think it's 800000 It's not much, but... Yeah, I don't know if it's the same thing with these guys, but yeah, I just reckon just get away for Christmas or something. Yeah, the responsibility overrides any holidays at the moment, surely. Yeah, okay. Um, I have a couple of other things to talk about. Maybe we'll just quickly talk about the form ladder at the moment. So yeah. since round 11, West Coast, North Melbourne, Brisbane and Essendon have won four games. That'd be your top four. Yeah, so West Coast have the best percentage, but uh, yeah, so Geelong have they've lost a couple of games recently, and Port Sydney ran out the sort of top seven, <laughs> and Bulldogs yeah. top eight. Frio's fifteenth, so they're really struggling. Collingwood eleventh, yeah. GWS tenth, so they're really the ones that are. Yeah, so and Carlton's is there on thirteenth. So a couple of wins there after David Teague has taken over. More so. competitive for sure. Yeah, and Collingwood's probably the one that at number eleven, two wins and a percentage. Just under a hundred are uh, the ones that sort of stick out there. But um, yeah, really happy with how North has been going lately. But yeah. just a shame they couldn't do it earlier. So Essendon and North should be a good game as well. So two yeah. top well, four teams with the yeah. form ladder. So yeah, I'll do a little bit of a wrap. Maybe focus on some Essendon players. You got another stat as well. Yeah, I do. Yeah, and that's the point differential from turnovers. So. This is an important stat because the top three normally are the premier. There were the top three of these for the year are the premiers. Yeah. In the last twelve of the thirteen seasons. It's the main avenue so. to goal. Yeah. So these days. since round seven, North Melbourne are uh, they top that list with plus two hundred and twenty three, so followed by Geelong and Richmond. So the gap between North and Geelong's ninety points there. Yeah, yeah, it's almost almost a hundred. So um, it's yeah, North are doing pretty well. So testament to the coach who's simplified the message supposedly so hopefully we can keep that up in the next coming weeks yeah, Ray should show that screenshot to the board when he's presenting his case yeah exactly yeah so let's just quickly talk about the grand final at the mcg as our hot take to end the show today so he's, it's locked into 2057 which to be honest i find unbelievable yeah it's crazy yeah, yeah. like so far away like well, there's stadiums Why? like Optus, Optus and Adelaide Oval. I think they're more than capable of hosting a final. The Geelong with GMHBA, that's probably not practical to host a grand final with, what, twenty five to 30,000. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, Optus and... Yeah, that's a good, good point, yeah. It's just not fair, though, to interstate clubs. Like, yeah. the Crows yeah. and Tigers would have been played at Adelaide Oval <laughs> in 2017. Yeah. Whether that would have made a difference, I'm not sure. Mm. What do you think? Yeah, I was, my tone was agreeing with you there, but <laughs> <laughs> after reading on, I did write that I believe it should stay at the MCG. Uh, big, big bias. <laughs> but no, you've um, changed. Uh, you've almost convinced me. But I reckon. Yeah, yeah good it, it is a very, it, it is pretty unfair. But just uh, what do you? Why is it at the MCG? Is it just because of the atmosphere, the capacity? Well, the, it's the biggest ground. It's the home of football. I think it's just people don't want to change it's like yeah. why they probably kept the afternoon grand final not the twilight or a oh, night grand yeah, final yeah that's a no brainer just keep it at 10 or 2 10 yeah. or two thirty start but uh, with you the reckon there's a compromise to that though to make it a bit more even for interstate clubs yeah yeah so <laughs> thank you for asking me that but yeah maybe it is a complicated one but to make it fair on the interstate teams I guess it depends when where they finish up on the ladder so if they finish hey West Coast finish on top yeah. maybe they can play their prelim if they get through on the Friday night so they give yeah. them an extra day Yeah. so don't let them play on the Saturday night so yeah, give them fair. the longest break give the interstate teams the longest break as possible so yeah it gives them a chance I, I know it's a little bit of a tricky one because yeah. it depends who wins and there could be an upset but interstate teams they probably need some sort of advantage especially if they deserve it and yeah, finish they finish on top, top yeah. Yeah. like Adelaide a couple of years ago they finished on top but they couldn't Get the get, job done. Yeah, they well, they played on the Friday and Richmond played on Saturday, so yeah. they did work out last time. Yeah, but yeah, that's true. Yeah. Again, they have to fly to Melbourne and all that type of thing. So, yeah. Mm. So we'll probably end it there today. Yes, uh, we might talk about maybe injuries or something. Maybe. Yeah, that's your. So we'll leave that to. Uh, you got a good talk yeah. on that one. Injuries in the AFL. And the good Zocco is coming out on July 18th, Thursday week. So we'll definitely talk about that. We'll do a bit of homework on that and watch it. Okay. Cool. Thanks for listening, guys. See you next week.